Welcome to our bedroom. This one feels pretty personal. We've shown you our exterior remodel where we ripped off the face of the front of our house and gave it a new look. We walked you through the main spaces of the home where we've added layer and interest and given a new vibe. And now I'm going to take you through the bedroom spaces. This rug was the first piece I purchased for the room. I'm always on the hunt for beautiful vintage pieces and antiques and Sometimes I just come across one that I can't get out of my head and this rug was one of them. The pattern and the color palette with the deep blues and the olive greens and then the hints of this like peachy rust color, so unusual and it was the perfect size for our bedroom and it really became the jumping off point for the new color palette in the space. Our old room was more of like this moss green color and I loved our old bedroom but as a designer of homes and furniture, I love to try new things. I was looking at our Walt bed and we had never done it in a fabric that was a deep brown velvet or praline velvet. And I'm like, why has no one done that combination? I haven't, I haven't been tagged in it. We haven't styled it ourselves. I'm like, that's what this rug needs to be paired with. So with those as kind of like the star pieces in the center of the room, I built from there. And we were designing this settee. And I was like, that piece that we're designing for McGee & Co needs to be at the foot of my bed. I love the fringe, I love the stripes. It's all my favorite things. So we swapped out the more modern bench for this one and I love that it has like really streamlined end. We don't have arms to work with, it just has these great pillows and then you get this awesome detail across the bottom. Settees can be a bit confusing if you're not a designer, you're like what? What is that? How do I even pronounce it? And it's basically a small sofa. I mean, they're great in small spaces if you can't fit a love seat, but they also work really well at the foot of a bed. If you have a little extra space beyond what a bench would fit, a settee is a lot more comfortable than a bench at the foot of your bed. And if you're wanting to try out the tassel trend, Yes, tassels have been around for a long time, but we're seeing them trend in a big way in design right now. I think the best way to do it is in accent pieces. So whether that's a settee or an ottoman or pillows, that's going to allow you to add the look to your home without overhauling every piece. That said, I think that tassels, although they're trending, they're classic enough that if you went big and did a larger piece like a sofa with the tassel, it's going to look awesome and I don't think you can go wrong. For the bedding, I changed to a cream linen because I felt like it was a softer look with the deep brown and it wasn't as stark. I also changed up my pillows. I kept everything really light and neutral here so that the bed was the star. For the nightstand look, I swapped to our Dana nightstands that have this great woven shelf below and then our maze lamps. I love this lamp because it has these great handles and a tapered base and it gave a new look with the strong tapered shade and a little bit lower height than what we had before. I also added these sconces above our bed. They're a bit more contemporary, which I think is nice with some of the more traditional deep velvets and vintage rug, the fringe. I always like that juxtaposition. And it filled the wall space nicely. I also added this McGee & Co artwork. We used it in a shoot and I fell in love with it and brought it home. Didn't know where it was going to go and then just kind of played musical artwork and placed it in a bunch of different spots until I tried it here and the color was a perfect tie in with the rug. Over on this wall, I 
changed out my dresser. I loved my old dresser. It's still one of my favorite dressers to use in client projects, but like I said, I'm always trying our new McGee Co pieces and we launched this um, bleached burl dresser and I think that the tone is so cool and that it has these little sloping details here. And I also loved how the movement of the burl played off of the tones in this Diana Brambilla artwork. It's huge, it's 72 inches and I had a piece that was in scale before, but I just, with this big wall, I really wanted to try something oversized, overscale, but then still feel really calming in our bedroom. I did some changes on the styling. I kept my massive lamp the same because I love it. And then just did a few swaps, like this paper mache vase and Really, I think that the key to dresser styling is, I mean, there is a formula that is a no-fail formula, and that's if you have a lamp on one end, balance it out with a taller vase on the opposite end, and then fill in with a stack of books with something on top, and then a picture frame. It's kind of a no-fail combination to styling your dresser. This little chair over here was moved from Ren's bedroom, and Again, that's another like musical piece in my house because a vintage chair can like work by a bathtub, it can work next to a dresser or a console, and I just liked that it finished off this whole look really nicely. You're gonna hear me say vintage and antique like a lot of times in our house, and that's just because I always have my eye out for pieces that I fall in love with, and when I saw this, I was actually shopping for, um, a different project and I saw this and I was like I think that would fit on the left side of the fireplace in my room and this will act as storage for clothing I always have boxes of try-ons and it's messy and this is the perfect place I don't want to show it because it's not organized very well but this is where I'm hiding the online orders if you've done a dresser you have nightstands you've done a floor length mirror and you still have a little bit of space to work with in a dresser, I think a tall cabinet is a good place to um, look because it's a different height and a different shape than all of the other choices that you'd make. And if you can't expand your closet, you could add an armoire in um, your bedroom space to have overflow. And it filled the space beautifully. I love the antique tone that it brings to the room and gives it a lot of character. Before we head into Ren and Ivy's rooms, there is a new little spot I wanna show you at the top of our stairs. It always existed. You've seen the built-in bench before, but I created a little nook out of it and added my prized possession, this tapestry. I admire tapestries and have saved them for many years and they're expensive and I needed a very specific size because it needed to be narrow and they're often horizontally oriented. So I went on a deep dive like every day for a very long time until I found the right one and I found one online at an auction house in New Jersey and I placed a bid and I was checking it constantly and I won it and it's beautiful it's from the 1700s and the colors are rich and the pattern is I mean I my green is my favorite color so I am so excited that I can see this from downstairs looking up to this loft area and then also you can see that this foliage here is very reminiscent of the wallpaper in our dining room, and so there's some really good synergy there. This is our Clemens chair from McGee & Co. We styled it in our summer catalog, and I just fell in love with this rich velvet. It's a 
pretty um, petite size. I mean, it's really comfortable and it has these great casters, but it's manageable enough in size that you can use it in a small space like this. I grabbed this lamp from my studio and then we launched this cute table with wavy legs and they're like a perfect pair. Then over on this side, you can see that I swapped out my sconces. I used to have these sconces that had a leather shade and they were really cool, but they were more casual and I wanted to try something a bit more dressed up. So these are great with this arm detail and the angled pleated shade. And then, you know, when going through this refresh, I would just kind of take a moment and see like, well, what would give this a new life? And I kept the cushion the same. I had pretty eclectic pillows happening before. And so I decided to just do four of all the same pillow so that the pattern moment was happening with the tapestry. And then these are two pieces of original art that I've been collecting and just waiting for the right spot and realized that they worked really beautifully in a stack here. So this area used to just be a bench and I've now made it like a full kind of extra cozy nook area now. Oh, there's one more thing I forgot to say. So when we were remodeling our house, one of the visions I had for the living room was to create this beautiful curved um, opening but then also do flush mounts in a grid over our stairs. So it felt like a separate room. Before it was kind of just like all together and this allowed it to be its own space. So you can see that the TNG carried into this room and over um, above the window seat. But then we did these Didier ceramic flush mount lights from McGee & Co. I love that they look good repeated, that the ceramic shade is like a really soft look against the ceiling color. And it did give this this, its own its own area so that we're getting again that separation that I was looking for between these open spaces and next we'll head into Ren and Ivy's rooms